Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I'm so sorry for whoever's controlling audio right now. <laughs> Barbara, Barbara just went full Aussie. Did Hello, it. and welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast live Woo! from Austin, Texas. Today's episode brought to you by Ring, the Zebra, and Stamps.com. Gus couldn't be here because he doesn't love you. I'm Bernie. <laughs> I'm Barbara. I'm Ellie. I'm Ashley. And Gus could not be here because he doesn't love you. <laughs> hey, everybody. So I have to say, I was just out of town last week because the last two weeks were South by Southwest, but then also Austin has its school's spring break. So I was out of town yep. with JD. We went on one of our uh, sailing trips because we're learning to sail. And some, who's the guy who's in the pre-show said he's from Philadelphia? Where are you at? Yeah, you're from Hi. Philly. You got to be louder than that, man. Come on. <laughs> there we go. So I got to say, Philly Airport, I don't know why I went from oh. Puerto Rico to Philadelphia Starting there. to here. The Philadelphia Airport is a jewel, and you should be <laughs> proud of that airport, sir. Oh, it took Seriously, a turn. It's like, it's like the future. It's a, yeah. literally like every gate has tablets at all the things, and you can just order food from there. And then every gate also has a small convenience store oh, where right. you just check yourself out. Is it so they trick you into thinking that Philadelphia is a nice city? <laughs> They're like, come to our airport, just have a taste. Yeah. Have a taste. <laughs> Sir? Taste us. Don't we'll listen to her. Good. Go birds. Go birds. I keep trying to <laughs> I thought you said go girds. <laughs> I tell you what though, it is uh, it's amazing to me that I had to connect through Philadelphia. That's way the fuck out of the way from like off the southern part of Florida all the way up to Philadelphia, back down to Austin. Why we're the eleventh largest city in the nation now. Why don't we have more direct flights? It doesn't make any sense. So Austin's not a hub for any airline, right? So it you just know? sort of gets leftovers. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a sloppy seconds of uh, flying. <laughs> Poor Austin. Didn't they just get another terminal, though? I feel like they're on their way, and maybe like, you just need a little bit of patience. The South yeah, Terminal. I'm going to get in there. Yeah. yeah. It's that's actually one of the few things in Austin that's keeping up with the growth of Austin. Is the, is the airport. Everything else is sailing. Yeah, like all the streets and everything else. All the highways are just like, we don't know. It's, there's no way. Who, who came we from the furthest away? Do we determine this? Who came from the furthest away to be here tonight? I think beep, there's some uh, from I California. Think they, I heard from California. Yeah. You're from Canada? Barb, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Barb. Jonathan? <No. laughs> Do you Where guys... are you from? Calgary. Calgary. Never been there. <laughs> Good. <laughs> when two Canadians meet, do you feel obligated to apologize to each other? <laughs> In, Dude, in the utmost politeness. Whenever there's an English person in the vicinity, in any place, everyone here is like, oh, you guys should meet, you'll be best friends. And I'm like, <laughs> why do you think that is true? <laughs> We're English, we don't want to talk to each other. There was this one time, and I only recently remember this because I blocked it out, where I was taking my dog on a walk, and Gavin and was walking the other way, and we both had this moment where we were like, let's not acknowledge each other all yeah. week. And we walked past each other, and I bet we were both just like, yes. Yeah. Was it? It's like the best day ever. Yeah, it was so good. Like, not that we don't like each other. We're like, you know, we're friendly, but we're both just like, I don't, I don't want to be like, hey. Did it? We both exist. This did is, it make you feel like home? Yeah. Yeah, that just kind of like natural cold shoulder that we have. It's yeah. so refreshing. Whenever Gavin and I see each other from across the hallway or like we're walking down the same hallway towards each other, it always becomes who's going to push over the other person mm. first. Yeah, a little different. And so it becomes just like kind of like this weird dance between me and Gavin. Oh, ooh. <laughs> now I'm going to take extra pleasure in every time I see Gavin. I already go, hey, Gavi! And I'm going to do that so much. Yeah. <laughs> and just know that he's dying inside. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It's English. It's just an English like, thing. Just go find him at the grocery store. Yeah. <gasps> ooh. This is like a su super easy swap out today for me. And by the way, Ellie is not going to be with us for the whole podcast. She Which is why I look like this. I didn't just overdress by like 150%. <laughs> She's got a show. She's performing tonight. Where are you performing after this? I'm performing at the Mohawk tonight with my band Wild Disguise. Oh. Thank you. So. Which is at what time? It starts at, well, we're on at 10. There's music already going, but we're on at 10. 10 o'clock. The important people are on at 10 o'clock. Oh, thank yeah. you. I was really hoping you were going to say that you're going to choose someone from the audience and swap outfits with them. <laughs> oh. It's a game. <laughs> but yeah, I do feel like the kid that did not get the memo <laughs> about how casual this is. I'm just like, no, this is cool. This is what we all dress like. I'm actually like, wearing my evening gown under here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be good. 
But, yeah. but it's it, the swap out's easy because basically you're female, Gavin, for sure. me. Sure, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and like That's Gus, sweet of you. Gus and I are like a super uh, married couple at this point because we've been doing this podcast together for ten years. So it's like I feel like I can, you know, not have to pivot too much in my conversations tonight. Oh, That's good. bullshit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have some complaints about Apple. <laughs> <laughs> what is your complaint about Apple? They announced a bunch of stuff today, actually. Oh, they did? They announced an uh, Apple credit card. I don't know why, but they did. Oof. And uh, it feels so e-corp, doesn't it? It does. Like, they, you can get a physical card that, get this, has no number and no, like, security code and anything. It's just a fucking card that says, I have an Apple credit card. You use, a, you use, still, it's Apple Pay. It's Does it actually like, say, I have a fucking Apple Pay? <laughs> but Apple, that would be kind of cool you, you probably have to pay extra to get the custom engraving for that option. <laughs> I bet you uh, do. But, yeah, it's coming out this summer, I guess, but it's basically anywhere that takes Apple Pay, which is, you know, in the U.S. at least, like, uh, 30% of places. Or just use your phone. So it's really, yeah, exactly. Dude. It's anywhere that you can use Apple Pay where you've already got your phone, you could use this fucking useless card. <laughs> wait, A friend wait, of wait. mine just came to visit from England, and he was like, I mean, you guys have contactless everywhere, right? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, they still write checks here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my favorite is when you do the contactless, and then they make you, they print it out yeah. yourself to sign it. It, uh -huh. just, it doesn't make any sense at all. No, it doesn't. It is, they're, they're, we're getting in more places though. Like at the super slowly, future slowly airport in Philadelphia, <laughs> you can just bust out your phone. I have glitter all America's over me. America's yeah. greatest look, airport. I did look that. Look at this chair that was me. already. I, I was the glitter bomb, I'm sorry. I have this stuff called unicorn snot that I got for Christmas. That was like, I, I did make everyone put it on. And now well, there is glitter. I mean, you didn't make me put it on, make, you forced it upon. We, the yeah. thing is we walked in the room and she mm -hmm. goes, I have glitter, and we went, <laughs> glitter me. It was, it yeah. was gold or pink. Yeah. And so, like, who's not going to glitter up besides Bernie? Yeah, I did not, but I'm getting glitter by osmosis here. Glitter by proxy. <laughs> so, so what is the purpose of this credit card? So it's, it doesn't have a number associated with um, a different account? Is there an interest rate? <laughs> There's a uh, yes. It's so it's through. It's like Goldman Sachs and Mastercard. Okay. Is sort of is who they're working with so on like it. Evil um, and evil. And <laughs> and as far as I can tell, I only did a little bit of reading because they made a bunch of announcements. But it's gonna have uh, you know it's like cash back sort of like credit. Um, they put credit into your Apple wallet or whatever the fuck. Yeah, you can, so you can spend more money at Apple. Absolutely. Right. So you can so you can buy your new Apple products with Apple and then uh, wow. and then pay Apple all of your debt. So it's like forever. an online. It's like a digital Apple Country Club. <laughs> I guess. In like twenty years, what? the entire world is going to be in the shape of an Apple. <laughs> it is Apple. <laughs> Welcome to Planet Apple. Because yeah, they. They also announced uh, it's pre flat. the Apple TV Plus or something that's like their their new their new version of like you know Netflix or Hulu or whatever that's going to have original programming. And they or also like, announced a like game Rishi, subscription service. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, look, look, let's. I, yeah. I'm not going to have yeah. I'm not going to have Rooster Teeth slumming it down with Apple. Oh, again. thank you. That's nice. Smart Can I have a Rooster Teeth credit card? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Marvel credit card, too, I learned today. No. Yeah, yeah there's a Marvel credit card. What is it? Does anyone have a Marvel credit card before I bitch all about this thing? <laughs> and the viewer would have it. I have a Disney one. You d it's like a... Well, it's Chase, but it's got, like, the puppies on it. <laughs> oh, I think and Disney every time I hand it over, people are like, wow. What? Disney puppies? The 101 Dalmatians. Oh! <laughs> You're like, it has the puppies on it. It has 101 like, Dalmatians, and like everyone, every time I pass it over, people are like, nice. But <laughs> there's this place in town that's a dog bar, like a dog park slash bar called Yard Bar, and they love it. They're like, sweet car, dude. They're like, I'm you like, got those Disney puppies on Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I did. Just for here. Not sure. That's probably the only place, though. <laughs> it's the only place that enjoys it. Everyone else is like, are you a full grown Yeah, you're an adult. Like, Should you have a credit card like, at all? Yes, I do. <laughs> can, can you sign and for this? And it gives me 25% in the Disney store, where I don't go, ever. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> but you might. I wonder if it'll uh, end up working for that Disney, the Disney video service that's coming out this year. Oh, yeah. Which is also Marvel. <laughs> also Marvel. <laughs> It's all one. And then they'll be bought by Apple at some point in time, I'm sure. <laughs> what, is that? What, is that? what do you get with the Marvel card? Spider-Man. Superheroes. <laughs> but, I don't know. Spider-Man bucks. <laughs> like, Spider uh, my brain tried to come up with something as it was already speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Never you have pay off your better? balance and Iron Man comes and jerks you off. I don't know. Hey. Oh. <laughs> 
super I mean, speed. I would take that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It just seems like Apple. Why would you need a credit card? They already make like 30% off everything they sell through the iPhone. Out of all the Marvel superheroes, which one would you want to jerk you off? <laughs> I feel like Captain America would be very caring. Yes. Whoa. Mr. Fantastic, you have thought about this. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. I think the Hulk. <laughs> oh. Like dangerous play, or, or just maybe not all the way Hulk, just like Mad Banner, like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he's going through that really jerky transformation between you... the two, that'd be perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, who's the really fast guy? Oh, the, he's in Quicksilver. Quicksilver. I was about to say Shazam. I was like, <laughs> I was Very getting close. my my it would be moments mixed up. I was like the Flash. <laughs> oh yeah, he's my favorite one. That's on the DC card. Yeah, he's uh, that you have to get a completely different card for him to jerk you off. Yeah, oh. I, I would wonder. I would wonder what else. Just reading the small print, like, oh come on. <laughs> is, the, is the is the Flash that's in Justice League? Is he like the Flash that's on the TV show? No, uh, I mean, no, it's different. It's a different actor. Flash... And um, you guys can help me on <laughs> this. The that? one who's the one who is on the TV show is that Ezra Miller? Or is he that the movie one? Grant that's Grant Gustin, right? The movie one is Ezra Miller. And he was also oh, in delicious. something else I watched that I. Acts of being a wolf. Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts. Beasts. Yes, that's the I watched Fantastic Beasts too over the weekend. I don't know why they're planning. They don't on want to make him mad. Five, he turns into a big old scribble. five movies. <laughs> five movies. He turns into a big mad scribble if you make him mad. That's he what does. I learned from those movies. He does. Big angry scribble coming at you. So what was the deal with the choice for the Flash in Justice League? Is that based on anything? Like any specific? I should have John here to answer this. Is it a comic? Because he seems like one of the cast members from Big Bang Theory. The way he's like, the way that, he's in Justice League. That's what it would be called if the Hulk jerked you off. The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> 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 could I pay him with the Marvel credit card? <laughs> yeah, you could swipe through his butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> leave, him, leave him a nice little like, tip on that. I use chip and pin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing though. TV Flash, I really like. Most of my exposure to him, admittedly, has been through the Supergirl musical crossover yeah. episodes. Yeah, and, um, yeah. You know, which are amazing, by the way. Don't look. I like was going to say that. <laughs> so amazing. Uh, but he's brilliant. <laughs> Did that get canceled, like everything else, or is it only the Netflix shows that all got? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Arrow's ending. It's. Was it like 14 seasons for that show? It's been around forever. Yeah, and uh, and I think most of its spinoffs are still going, but I haven't watched really closely. That's all CW stuff, so I, I don't follow it so much. But still going. Flash. Flash. Too much. Thumbs up. It's too much. I I, I lived I for Arrow. I never saw a single frame of the show, but I had a friend. A not a frame. Not one frame did I. Not see. one frame of that show. <laughs> My whole exposure with the character of Green Arrow is he shows up at the end of the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel. That's a hundred percent of what I know about Green Arrow. It's just like Robin Hood, basically. Uh, think of it as um, uh, uh, Jeremy Renner, except DC. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but there was like, our friend Ed, who lives in San Francisco. He would I only would watch the show Arrow through him on Twitter because he would live tweet and watch every episode. And his whole thing was like, I can't wait for this episode to start. I can't wait to see who gets arrowed this week. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, look at this guy. He's totally getting arrowed. <laughs> <laughs> they did, they used arrow though. They called it the arrowverse, I think. Everybody, and thank you. I, this is all, by the way, I've all mostly observed through osmosis, ab absorbed through osmosis. Is, uh, like my glitter. They, yeah, they, um, they ended up with a bunch of TV shows that they started the characters on Arrow and then spun them off to their own whole shows. Oh, okay. So it's almost like what they ought to have done for the DC movies, but instead they just succeeded with TV. Yeah, well, the DC TV stuff was better. Yeah, I think than the. I mean, Marvel doesn't have a great track record on TV. Are you like Agents of Shield? I do. I do. <laughs> Agents of Shield is is uh, not even a guilty pleasure. I just enjoy it. I think your favorite character in the MCU is like Agent Coulson. Like you. you know. Oh hell yeah. Justin. He's so Precious lovable. And he's a gem, no, and I like him so people. much. <laughs> it's okay, Ellie. I don't watch it. I'm sorry. Just get a Marvel credit card, and you'll. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like download the information for yeah, me, exactly. like the Matrix. You get a primer. You get like 10% off of Marvel movies from now. Is there a DC credit card? 
Probably. Oh, we credit, I don't see why there wouldn't be card. like would you would you or Ooh. would you not get like a Batman <laughs> credit card that's shaped like a battery? I was gonna say it needs to be in the I would totally bat. get that. Like what are those called? <laughs> <laughs> those things that he throws. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep making this down until someone tells me. <laughs> One more time. Just one more time. One more time. That's for Peter Hayes, so he can like put your sound effects over Batman. What was your sound you made for Pikachu at E3? Hello. Hello. And so he edited over that. I'm pretty sure that's what Pikachu says in canon. Pokemon credit card. Oh. A lot of people get a Pokemon credit card. Money printer. Does anybody have a really stupid credit card? Be honest. Anybody? What do you got? Yeah, your hand went up and then immediately down. So it must be terrible. What? Cassette tape. You have a cassette tape. Cassette. So it's cool. Is it like an analog credit card? Cassette. Was it just like a note from your parents? Oh, it looks like us. Camera. So this be live stream. Don't hold up your credit card. Jesse, we've been through this before. So it was you selected that image for it. It's a cassette tape. You didn't like. It wasn't like Magnavox yeah, well, like, credit card, right? What's the dumbest perk for a credit card that people have here? Dumbest perk. Well, I think like, I'm, I'm making fun the of the Apple cashback one, but I mean, I do kind of do the same thing with airlines, where I run all my purchases through one credit card, so I get a bunch of miles, and then I can use it to trade in for flights. But you don't actually get a free flight. No. You get close to a free flight. Like, if it's like, oh, I saved enough points, I get a free trip to London. Oh, no. Also, I got to pay 400 bucks. Yeah. yeah. It's like you have to pay a processing fee, which is basically pretty close to what the you ticket costs. You still have cost. to pay taxes. That's the thing, right? You, you still have to pay taxes. What on do it. you redeem? Red wow, well, forgot how to speak for a moment. <laughs> what do you redeem those miles on then, if not for travel? That's it. Just there, travel? What else would you do? Can't for? you get, like, aren't there. You do hotels and stuff? Like, like, body and stuff? It's like a, a <laughs> physical objects you could also redeem it like for? Like batarangs? <laughs> <laughs> I would like 1,400 batarangs. Yeah. I have so many miles. Yeah. I think the miles. Send them to me immediately. <laughs> Good day. Right, it'll cost you 10 miles for all of those. <laughs> Deal. Excellent. <laughs> the miles I think you can only use for flights, but you can get miles from different stuff. Like, you can get miles for renting cars. Yeah. Oh! Oh. Renting cars or staying in hotels, you can specify. Or you can go through, like, build up, like, a thousand different point systems that you're part of with these affinity networks. Enchanting. Basically, so you'll spend more money. I thing. get money off at the Disney store. <laughs> so, because you, <laughs> jokes you, you have a Disney credit card. <laughs> well, it's Chase, as equally as evil. So. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get a Marvel credit card or an Apple credit card? No. Did you get a Microsoft credit card? I couldn't get another credit card. I'm really bad with the one I have. <laughs> it turns out it's not free money. <laughs> Going <laughs> is a surprise. You still have to pay for it at the end of the month. And I was like, uh, sorry, what? We're not a socialist country like uh, England. Dude, one time, and this is for real, my sister called home after she went to university. She was two years older than me. And she was like, oh my gosh, dad, my housemates played the biggest prank on me. And he was like, why? She said, they sent me this fake bill for water. Like, apparently you have to, like, pay for water. And we're like, no, you do have to pay for water. And she was like, no, you don't. <laughs> water is free. You don't pay for water in the UK? No, we do, no, she but she thought it was a joke. Oh, I thought she was here and got a bill for water. You were no, no, she, she, thought it was, no? she thought her housemates had played a joke on her and sent her a bill for water. And she thought it was like, <laughs> like that's not a real Who thing. Who pays for water? Hey, she was like, that this time is you got crazy, like a, water is free. It was like a $2,000 water bill because your toilet was running? That was because of Ezra, yeah. Yeah, I was uh, renting him my house. I had moved out of one house, and while I was selling it, I rented it uh, to Ezra. And then one day I got a fucking water bill for $2,500. And so I was like convinced. Should have sent that to your sister. <laughs> I was convinced that there was a pipe that had busted under the house and was like going to make a huge sinkhole and like destroy the house. So I went running down there in my car. I walked in. The as soon as I walk in the front door, I hear the downstairs toilet running, like just like. And also, all, basically, I went in to the bathroom. Sure enough, I hear the toilet running because the tank was filling and filling and filling and then going down. Right. And so I just did this jiggle, and it stopped. Twenty five hundred bucks. <laughs> To his credit, Ezra got the bill significantly reduced. I'll just say that. Was, was it, it like one of the yelling on the phone kind of situations? I wasn't there for it, but I'm sure it was like very intimidating. And he was, I bet it was. Yeah, I bet it was. He shook his finger. He went kachoo kachoo. On the phone? <laughs> now listen here, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do to you what I did to the toilet handle. <laughs> <laughs> Shake you down. He said, listen, I have an AT&T credit card. Yeah, maybe, maybe he just redeemed his miles. 
<laughs> yeah, he uses miles to pay for water. Oh, dude, that would be tough. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to get an Apple credit card. I'm going to go on record as saying that right now. I have an Apple you watch. Liar. I have an Apple phone. <laughs> called the iPhone. I have one of those. <laughs> I'm not getting the Apple credit card. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. Everybody remember this moment. So that I when just, Bernie gets an Apple credit card, we can all be like, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, here's the way I feel. I feel you were like, our inner monologue just now. Yeah. Apple is What's a successful huh? company doing huh? what it does. And so is Marvel <laughs> and all these Disney is very successful. Not everything has to be turned into like a soulless cash grab. I want to remind everybody that this episode of the Rishi Podcast is brought to you by Ring. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. You probably have seen their smart video doorbells and cameras that protect millions of people everywhere. Ring helps you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world. So if there's a package delivery or a surprise visitor, you'll get an alert and be able to see, hear, and speak to them all from your phone. ka -ching. <laughs> ring video doorbells can be hardwired or run off batteries, so you can add a ring just about anywhere. The ring is like the one piece of home automation we don't have. So what I'm hoping is, by me reading this tonight, we're gonna get one. Because we have cameras and stuff, but we don't have that ring. And it's like, I feel like the last missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle, because everyone who has them loves them. Uh, just for you, and for you, Ashley, as well, we have a special offer on a Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building your ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash teeth. That's ring.com slash teeth. The Ring Starter Kit can give you the peace of mind you need when away from your home or when you're at home. Protect yourself and your home with the Ring Starter Kit. Get it now at ring.com slash teeth. That's ring dot com slash teeth. Thank you, Put Ring. Teeth on your ring, and it'll be. Whoa. I don't like it. Coming weird. next week, the Ring credit card. <laughs> teeth. I really do. I, I feel like that you know, we were uh, talking about the electricity bill. How our electricity bill. I can't live that you untied my shoe here, Barb. This is killing me. Um, I didn't do that. I feel like <laughs> the elect the electricity bill in our house is higher. And Gus pointed out to me it might be because we have like smart switches and stuff that are kind of always on a little bit. But that little. is always drawing a little bit of power, but we also have, the, like our house came with two separate air conditioning units, one for the upstairs, one for the downstairs. And then we have a separate one for our bedroom because for whatever reason, it, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't reach. Yeah. Uh, and then the heat on that doesn't work, so we also rent a space heater all winter. Such a and relatable conversation. My, my heating sounds like a ghost. You know, you know what, though? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it fires up, it's like, ooh, and I'm like. The, uh, I had. So it's just me, that's my. Take me, guys. Satan. I had a very, like, sobering uh, realization when I was living um, in Sydney. I moved into an apartment, and this was the, like, the first apartment I'd had by myself there, and I was really excited. And I moved in in the, in the um, let's see, it was autumn, so it was really nice at you the time. You had your cat too, you had Rapture? Uh, not yet. He's a good cat. No, I, did, I didn't have Rapture okay. yet. I, uh, so I was all by myself, and it was great temperature, and then it started to get a little bit colder, so I went around looking for the heater. That's when I discovered that, the, that uh, it's apparently quite common, there is no heater, there is no air conditioning in this apartment. Yeah. There is, I was just wondering, going, in oh, Australia? where the thermostat is, and there's nothing at all this and that's like, just quite what, common it's expensive yo we don't have ac really at home yeah you must not have ac in a lot of places in canada too barb no right? yeah we, but heating absolutely. yeah oh yeah yeah, heating, but yeah. The, yeah my apartment in montreal for the four years i lived there for college didn't have any uh ac so and i mean it didn't get too hot but like australia is like 120 it, oh, goes it up was too. miserable yeah like yeah. i feel like that should be illegal oh no people just <laughs> people just bought freestanding units like that yeah. was sort of what you did, and I had no idea. I'd never realized that that. W I was like, "What do you mean it doesn't come standard?" You <laughs> 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 oh, what? I'm clutching my pearls, <laughs> preposterous. <laughs> I I lived in a house in my second year of university. I, I went to university on the coast in England, so it was always cold and always raining, and um, <laughs> we had we lived in the student house that was so gross. 
disgusting. And it started growing black mold all over the walls, right? Which is That's like not good. an issue That's like, the bad stru mold. structurally in the building, right? So we had the landlord come look, look, look at it because we were like, hey, this is gross. And he came <laughs> over and he, he looked around and he was like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, okay. So what it is, is that you guys are breathing <laughs> inside of the house. And that's going to be causing some condensation. And we were like, oh, I'll just stop doing that then, shall I? <laughs> so, but we ended up getting our entire year's rent back by like reporting oh, him to shit. our council to be like, yeah, he told us that we were breathing. Yeah. <laughs> I love if you like look back at the lease for the place and it's just like at the bottom, very, very small. No <laughs> breathing. No breathing. No breathing and no drying your clothes inside. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, cover friend, breathing. Yeah, there was like black mold growing on our walls and our ceiling, and he was like, "Yeah, that's that's, that's breath." <laughs> <laughs> no, not many people know that, but that is breath. Yeah, and we're like, I don't think that's true. You just, breathe outside. <laughs> <laughs> breath. <laughs> we'll just go oh, outside and then be like, "All right, back in." <laughs> there you go. Just make little holes through the wall. Gotta make chicken nuggets. Straw. Sleep with your head out the window. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was <laughs> it's insane. But yeah, I had a I had a. Uh, an apartment here in Austin that was like the, the air conditioning unit sounded like, you say it sounded like a ghost your meter. <laughs> Mine sounded like squirrels fighting is the only way I can describe it. It's high pitched, like screaming and thumping. And I. It's, what I, if it was? What? It was squirrels? <laughs> it was just two squirrels going at it every night. That's how I ran the, the turbine. Yeah. But I like, I would call maintenance. I kind of I kind of miss living in an apartment just having a number and saying, hey, come fix my stuff. Even though they were always super shitty at it, like they do the least amount to fix it possible. Yeah. And like he, the guy even came in, he goes, "Yeah, that's your belt." And I go, "So, <laughs> very you know, good. Change out the belt." And he says, "He goes, well, it still works, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, but it's screaming like this all the time. That's why we're shouting at each other right now." Sometimes my my brain thinks of like scenarios based off like jokes that you make. This happens to me all the time on the <laughs> podcast. Like you talked about like two squirrels screaming. So in my mind, it starts going on the story of like, in your air vents, there's these squirrels that are on these wheels, and there's one squirrel with like a whip. It's mm -hmm. just like, mush, mush. And they're just like, bee, 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 bee. <laughs> As you're talking, that's just what my brain is putting together. I was imagining a tiny squirrel boxing ring oh. with, like, <laughs> with like coaches and stuff. And they're like, wait, hang on, he's in. Carry on. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe we should look into that though. It could bring the bill down. Yeah. I mean, are you, are you opposed to squirrel slavery? Yeah. Why don't we just put mush in there? Spirit. Harness, no. harness the power of mush. Can you Look imagine, at the like, scratch he an gave Yeah, we got in a fight. Yeah, that big was, scratch. Big turns out they can see it. That's yeah. glitter. No, she's got, like a, she's got a scratch that goes like half the length oh, of her forearm. It's, yeah. it's massive. We, we had a disagreement. I said he was a bad cat, and he said he, that I'm not his real mom. So we fought. <laughs> wow. Then he pulled out a batarang and went, <laughs> <laughs> Made, Which he I, paid for with his Purina credit card. <laughs> <laughs> then it made him go run the air conditioner. <laughs> but you could Airbnb your place as a squirrel fight club. <laughs> now, great. Bob, I think we need to start a business. All right. <laughs> squirrel fight club, squirrel gym. The one rule of squirrel fight club is you only speak about <laughs> squirrel. Now, <laughs> squirrel fight club. now I'm picturing them like lifting little weights. <laughs> conditioning! <laughs> Bernie's like, I hate you guys. No, you're reminding me Get off of. My podcast. You're reminding me of a story that I, I read on Reddit this week, which Are was. We? Yeah, it was a little bit, because you're talking about Airbnb in your place. Yeah. And it does seem like that's a totally normal thing now to let strangers come and stay sure. in your home and, judge and, and you rent them. But I saw one this week about a guy who used a service, and I don't know what it was because he didn't name it, where it just lets people rent your car and they come yeah. and they they take away your car mm -hmm. and they rent your car. Not like an Uber. What it's called? Yeah, and this guy, like, they used it for drugs and sex and then wrecked it and Aww. then left it. Beans. They're nice. Not, Eric, they're not a sponsor, are they? <laughs> this company? But, uh, they are? Okay. Uh, they're a great service. But, uh, I don't know why. It seems like, that seems like such a bad idea to let someone just rent your car that you don't know. At the same time, having someone rent your home for a weekend seems totally normal to Well, because you can't move their home. <laughs> you can't go back and be like, where's, where's, my, where's my house? <laughs> I think it's steal everything. Like, you parked it in this dodgy offshore, like, <laughs> smashed in all my windows. Come on, guys, bring it back. 
there are a lot of those car shared services, though. Like, uh, there is, there's one here in Austin called uh, Car2Go. Yeah. That's uh, all little smart cars, and they're just parked around, and you, if you have the membership, like the you go, you, you basically, like, tap a card on it, it unlocks the car, and then you are, Time's up. you... We've unlocked one. <laughs> just like that, it's that easy. You, Lock it then you drive it around, and then when you leave it, you just, it's basically like the scooter system. Yeah. But with cars. Have you ever seen? Much more expensive. Have you ever seen those cars or scooters abandoned in like literally the middle of nowhere? It's You're like, did this person favorite. get abducted by aliens? It's my favorite thing. One of my favorite, my guilty pleasure is seeing those scooters all kinds of fucked up. But like, what? I don't know why. I just love it. Like when they're like half in a fence and you're just like, yeah. I just, <laughs> so we, I just, I really get a kick out of it. But like we, I've seen them on the side of the road, like. On the, like in the middle of nowhere. Oh, in the Austin suburb, there's a guy getting busted riding one down Mopac. Yes. Like, yes. which is like so many things wrong. That's it's, a highway, the, by the, the way. The cop is. Counters. Yes, it's a highway in Austin. It's a. Uh, it's called. You know why it's called Mopac? Uh, uh, Missouri Pacific. Yeah, the Missouri Pacific Railroad runs down the middle of it. I don't know why the Missouri Pacific Railroad runs through Texas. It makes <laughs> no fucking sense. So once again, Austin can't get a direct flight I anywhere. Mean, it's, <laughs> it's taking the shortest possible route, obviously. Like, yeah, you guys can take the train. Missouri and... <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, he's riding down the feeder. The cop is parked up on the side, walking down on the freeway to stop this guy. And the dude who's filming it is driving. <laughs> it's like there's nobody doing what they should it. be in this scenario. It's very, very typical Austin. I don't know why it gets me so jazzed. I just like to see him all messed up. The scooters? Yeah. So we just put out a documentary. Uh, about scooters? Waiting for the punchline. Uh, it's about Nick Scarpino. Woo! Anybody seen it yet? Gladly. Yeah. Dude, we have, uh, part, part of my job at Rishi is I have to watch everything we make about 100 times each. So I've literally seen that documentary probably like 30 or 40 times. And uh, my Japanese. favorite part that I wait for every single time, I think it made the final cut, when was the joke the, uh, that Nick has about the scooters in San Francisco. And I'm going to ruin his joke, but I'm going to do it anyway. And he talks about how they had these scooters and they didn't anticipate, you know, the impact they were going to have in the city or the environmental impact because people are mad about them and taking them and throwing them into the bay. He goes, so on a, you know, the bad news is they're very bad for the environment, but... The good news is, man, they are a lot of fun to throw into the bay. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that joke so much. It's part of his set that he does about halfway through it. But it is, I, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite docs that we've produced. Um, it was a very, I think, like, really deep, honest look yeah. at somebody who's trying to do something really hard. And he was very upfront about what he's doing and really gave a lot of access to... It also has probably the best title of anything we've ever made. Waiting for the punchline. Gosh, I'm glad to hear you say that because it's like you go through like a thousand names for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I just love the double entendre because it's like obviously waiting for the punchline is something you do in comedy. Um, but it's also the, the club that he's trying to get into is called the punchline. So it's waiting for the punchline. Hmm. Genius. I love it. I wish I, have, I thought of it. I have mad respect for anyone that can do stand up. I think it's one of the hardest ways to be a performer in, that there is. You're by yourself. You're by yourself. The whole thing relies on your ability to control a room with just your presence. Like, I mean, you see, you can see, you see a lot of stand-ups who are super funny who just can't, who just can't like capture a room in the way that they need to do it. Like I went, I've seen Christina perform a couple of times, and like I can't imagine having the confidence, in, like just the chops to go up and do that. Like every time I see her perform, I'm just like, you're doing it right now. Whoa! Well, yeah, but it's not the same, is it? It's not the same as being like, hey, this is just me on just stage. Just you, yeah. And like. We can leave if you want. You don't feel that, you know. Actually, that was kind of what I was getting at. So you guys are kind of like puncturing my vibe a little bit. No, like, no I just think it's an incredible thing to be able to do. But you don't feel that way singing. Because it's really just you up there singing. Well, yeah, well, it's different if you have a band, though. A little like, bit. Like, this is a version of, like, this is like, if I, it's very much like this. It feels like very much like this to me, because you have a band of people and you're all playing together. Right? I'm the drummer. That's what I'm implying. But being, I guess being, like. But you, you can't hand the mic to the guitar player. No. I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, you could. You could. But singing good harder. is not the same as being funny. <laughs> you know? I don't yeah. know. I just think it's a really cool thing to be able to do. Well, there's a fun thing. And then what, what are the things you get to see in the doc is it covers Nick over a very long period of time. And you get to see him, like, building a set. So you see how jokes perform in different places. And you watch him kind of hone specific jokes uh, with different audiences. And so it's really fun for anybody who's interested in doing stand-up comedy. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm. I love it. And then Jeff was... Uh, Jeff was in the comment threads for talking to some people. Like they were, there's a, I don't want to give it away too much, but there's a showcase with a lot of people from Rooster Teeth and Rooster Teeth like associated groups 
uh, did a stand-up showcase. Some Funhouse people. Yeah, Funhouse was in there as well. And uh, they were saying, like, some of the people had their phones in their hand, which apparently is a common thing. Even, like, Jeff was saying, he went and saw Louis C.K. and somebody else where they had their phone in their hand because they were, like, going through and, like, working through material. Yeah, a lot of the time if you're workshopping a set, that's how you'll do it. I've been to a couple of shows in London with, a, with comedians who were building their set for, for, to go on tour. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny how they'll test a joke and they'll just kind of see how the room, and then they'll just, like, make a note or something. And then if they get one that hits, they're like, okay, this is what you guys want. And then they'll go to all the material that's similar to that and they'll just kill it for the rest of the show. Like, Interesting. It's really, like, the way that they build it, the way that they, like, do that is inc really incredible. Literally just have, like, a whole pad of notes and be like, okay, so you guys like that one, so then that could flow to this. All right, knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, the interrupting blonde. The interrupting blonde, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're writing that one down. Is Move. This, I think... <laughs> I think this might be, I might be, I think I might have to go to my show. Oh, really? You're, you're getting so. close. You're getting close. So, you want to go now? Well, I, it feels like a natural pause, doesn't it? Kind of did until we ruined it with talking about it, yeah. Yeah, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Well, I will do this ad read. Ellie, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. And then, uh, it's going to be seamless. Seamless. I'm going to go now. I would like to remind everybody this episode of the Rooster Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by thezebra.com. How do you pick your car insurance? Hey, Chad. You probably just went with what your parents or friends have, but you could be paying too much. Some reports say that Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over $21 billion. That must be all the Americans, right? Not just one dude. But searching for a better deal can take hours and typically just ends up in getting unwanted spam calls. Until now, thanks to Zebra excuse me, thezebra.com. Thezebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site. It's the only place you can compare hundreds of policies from all the top carriers and choose the best for you. Plus, they will never sell your information to the spammers, so you won't get all those unwanted calls or emails. You just answer a few questions on a simple, fast form, and they find you the best rates and coverages in your state. TechCrunch called the Zebra Kayak for Auto Insurance. It's quick, it's easy, it's free, just an honest way to compare car insurance quotes from all the top providers all at once. Go today and start saving at thezebra.com slash rooster. That's thezebra.com slash rooster, spelled T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash rooster. Thanks, thezebra.com, for sponsoring this podcast. I am in the process of adding JD to our car insurance, as a new driver, oh shit, that is ridiculously expensive. How expensive is it? It's expensive. It's uh, like, like, uh, like for, for me and Ashley on our, our insurance for our cars is like X, and then JD adds another X. Like it oh, doubles wow. our car insurance. But I think because the reason is, is that he's automatically added to our cars, there's no fucking way we're letting him drive our cars. He's driving the truck and uh, the old production truck that we used. Yeah. And uh, so I just need to kind of get him on his own policy with just the truck and just him. Cool. So we'll see. So I'm, I'm, I should I'm use this. Your, I should use the Zebra. I'm still on your car insurance, right? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I hope not. <laughs> I have to go check now. So, so I had a thing that happened to me. Hey, by the way, welcome Chad, everybody. And uh, Bernie, I just want to say, like, it feels so great to you know, clearly be your number one pick for this podcast. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, I feel really bad about breaking up Bernie's Angels here. <laughs> this was, a, this was a, a, a very female podcast up until Chad came in. Yeah, and you were talking about comic stuff and I wasn't even on. You chose the Hulk to jerk you off? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Dude, he would rip your dick off. Maybe that's what Bernie's into. You only get that once. I just thought of a new show for you, Jerk Battle. <laughs> there there, there yeah. it is. Man, dude, every time we do like a male and female combatant in death battle, people are like, maybe they should end with fucking. And it's just like, really? No. All right, listen, just because I comment that on every one of your videos <laughs> doesn't mean you have to call me out like this. No. But that is literally, though, it's not just death battle. It's almost any time a man and a woman appear in anything on screen together, people immediately assume that they're sleeping together. Well, there have been stories, too, about, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, that... <laughs> Whoever is TDing and broadcast, bravo. <laughs> now I just need to get Trevor up here. Yeah, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley being pregnant is a little awkward now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say that, uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk more about the announcement. 
And yeah, we uh, talked about it during the pre-show, but we haven't talked about it in the podcast. So yeah. this is the p- first podcast I've done, and Ashley's done since we announced that Ashley is pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody not know uh, that? Just make it dance. Did anybody not know that? Anybody is that new information? Anybody? <laughs> to anybody? Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, did anybody not know that she was pregnant? And if it, Ashley's obstetrician is watching, we swear this is her last cocktail that she's gonna be <laughs> Oh no, no I don't sh- do that. They're gonna think that's real. <laughs> no, that's not real, that's not real. <laughs> Obviously, in fact, uh, we found out, when did we find, we found out, uh, I found out on Christmas day. Yeah, you did. Oh, a little Christmas surprise. And you have a video of that? Do you? Because I would not no, video myself. No, I, no, <laughs> Hold on, I, I got your present. <laughs> I was, Nintendo 64, oh wait, baby. <laughs> no, I was a little suspicious, so I did a test on uh, December 23rd, like that night or something, and then I was like, and then I wrapped it. Oh. And, I put, I, and then I put it on the bedside table. And you're like, this has my pee on it. <laughs> <laughs> and a blue line. Open it. But the blue line is important. <laughs> yeah. But then we had yeah, we our New it. Year's party, which you guys came to, <laughs> yep. and she couldn't drink at it. And so we were convinced that everybody was going to know. Well, she played it off because I thought she, like, she had a drink in her hand. I just didn't, I didn't have alcohol. I assumed it was it. alcohol. Here's right. the thing is I made, uh, I made like hot cider because Lindsay was there as well, and she couldn't drink. So I was like, here, I got you these caffeine-free sodas all for you. And I made non-alcoholic cider right here. But... You know, if people want to spike it, there's something over here that's fine. Oh, and, so then, had the and then I just drank cider all night. <laughs> Ew. I just assumed there was already alcohol in the cider. Oh, no, I put the bottle aside because I wanted my damn cider. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite part of the, the day that we all found out, because we all found out the same day when they announced yep. it on Twitter. People thought that I knew before because I almost implied it on a well, podcast. Well, it's because Bernie's yeah. a terrible liar. Yeah, she was watching at home when, Barb, you said, it was in context of some conversation, you say, well, like, you're about to be a new dad. No, I said, like, how do you feel to find out you're about to be a dad? I meant, like, in general, because you've had two kids. <laughs> right. right. But everyone took that as, like, oh, Barbara almost spoiled it. I was like, Barbara didn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> but there was somebody who called it out in that episode. Like, did you guys see Bernie's face and then timestamped it? It's like, I get the feeling that Ashley's pregnant and they're just waiting to announce it. And, like, everybody's like, Fuck you, downvote. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then I was like, that guy's right. I feel bad for that guy because he's 100% right. And people are like, mind your own business. Yeah. There's <laughs> always yeah. that one guy who has it spot on and everyone just... There really is. Idiot. It, the real answer, I say, is always buried in the comments. You can look down through when you know an actual situation. Yep. And you look down through it. It's like, here's the person about three quarters of the way down who gets it 100%. Somebody always gets it. Yeah. But it's hard to know which one that is. I mean, I've been called pregnant in videos for like years now hey me too <laughs> and it's it's they're, they're like i think she's Empire pregnant and i'm like nope just eating thanks yeah. <laughs> yeah there was a there was a video I, it was like a couple months ago where just like i i had a lot to eat for lunch maybe that day and someone's just like oh i bet you barbara's pregnant you, <laughs> you can tell by the way her abdomen is shaped and i responded i was like nah just fat <laughs> thanks though Jim. yeah i hate it when that happens <laughs> Someday, but same time, buddy. <laughs> no, uh, actually, in that regard, when Bernie was going out telling all of us, uh, you know, that they were having a kid, it was all like, congratulations, congratulations. And then I like, I've had two kids. And then I had this moment, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then I was like, oh, that's an insane reset timer. And I went up to you, and I was just like, yeah. wait, because your your youngest is what, 13? Yeah, he's yeah, about to 14. be 14 now. 14, just yeah. turned 14 earlier this month. Damn, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> like. So I think the only people we told first were we told the boys, and before we told a lot of other people, uh, like publicly made the announcement. Like I don't think I don't think I told anybody. Mate, Matt told Matt as well, but that was really yeah. it was the boys and Matt. But and as then, and part then we of told my family. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, and then everyone. Actually, we went up to Utah. Somebody found out before your parents. Oh yeah. Ashley <laughs> uh, was telling this story. Um, every now and again, we have a cleaning lady come through. And she helped, like she like finds like all the messes that I that have just sort of like piled up and then don't see anymore because they're now just background. And she she comes in, and she goes, "You're pregnant," and I was like, 
Did she? Did she? Find she found. It? She, she found my prenatal protein powder. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, "Oh, a baby!" Like, and I was like, "Shh!" I was like, "My mom doesn't know." Yeah. You should have been like, I like the flavor. So keep yeah. it on the down low. <laughs> yeah, just in case your manya runs into your mom somewhere. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be worth that, that, well, seeing those two meet <laughs> to have that spoiled for them. They no, but she's, she's been great. She she checks on me every time she's I see her. Like she's, she's like doting on Ashley I was the now. baby. Yeah. She likes, she likes the baby and she likes the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but not Bernie. He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm on the outs. <laughs> that was my favorite, though, that day, uh, because you guys had just announced it on Twitter and, like, came into the office, and we were all, like, hugging and, like, congratulations. But I knew that, like, you had just posted it on Twitter, and so there was a ton of people at the office who didn't know yet. So every time someone would walk into our office, I'd be like, Bernie, 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 Bernie. Hey, have you looked at Twitter? No? Bernie. And I would just be like. It was like performance yep. art. <laughs> Barbara wouldn't 100%. even. Barbara wouldn't even tell them herself. I'd be in my office. You come on here. Come on here. Tell them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bernie has something to tell you. Yeah, it was having everyone and taking them too. It went on for like three hours, <laughs> like that. It really did. Like you're in the bathroom. I'm like Bernie, come yeah. out here. <laughs> By the way, I don't even know this about me. Ashley knows it really well. I fucking hate secrets because I'm just bad about them. Like presents on Christmas. As soon as I get Ashley a gift, like I get, if the gift comes in the 10th of December. He's I, already trying to give it to me. Constantly. Just like, do you want to open it today? You can just open it and say it's for Christmas. You should see this. You got to see this. I have to be like, I have to tell him, no, no I don't want to open my presents early. That's yeah. very hard for me because of course I want it, but then I will have no presents for Christmas. I'm the same as you. If I buy someone a present, I have to give it to them that day. Right. I can't keep it. I'm like, well, you can use it now. I go nuts. But we were, we were just like, I was chomping at the bit. I said, like, can we tell just some, like one person? <laughs> like Christmas Eve, you know? It's like, can, I, can we just like find a just random one. person? Can we do on the just street? one? Yeah. yeah. She said, yes, we could tell the obstetrician. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. She was very surprised. <laughs> she was very happy. That's funny. And then we did game time. I've never seen this before. And then we were just like scaring you <laughs> with all these like. With all the parenting stories? stories? Yeah. 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 That was a fun one, though, because we had Becca and Chad on. So it was like all parents, you know. But yeah, I mean, you have parenting experience with the boys, and I mean, they're okay, right? They're kind of yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah I mean, like I, I can't really claim credit. Like you and Jordan raised the boys, and they became wonderful humans. And as I think, part of the reason that my uterus like thawed out is I was like, oh, they're not all demons, and I started having like <laughs> <laughs> a, like a lot of like kids and babies, and I was like, actually, like I always thought that I didn't like kids. And you know, you just get in that like mindset where like you just assume that this is the way that you are. Like, I just don't like kids. <coughs> I, will, I will probably never have kids. I just don't like them. And then you meet a bunch and you're like, wait, but every kid I meet, I like. Mm -hmm. Well, your experience And then you eventually was, like reevaluate. Remember that scene in Game of Thrones where the wall comes crashing down? <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Just so you all can visualize it. <laughs> there's Maybe. A, there's a joke about my white walkers in there somewhere. <laughs> oh. I don't want to explore that too much. Oh. Bravo. They were not walking. <laughs> but we were talking. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no one wants to picture that. <laughs> Nobody wants like, hold on. <laughs> Fuck. I can't look at you, Ashley. I can't look at you. <laughs> are you, uh, we you guys have got to be getting excited about it. Are you more excited about Game of Thrones or Avengers Endgame? Yes! I don't know. Like, I'm one, 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 one guy just shouted, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yes to all! I mean, look, next month is a big month. You know what I got to say that it's like sneaking in there is something I'm really looking forward to that I didn't even know existed three months ago? is Shazam. Um, okay. The baby's not coming next month. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was sneaking in there that got me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited about Shazam now. It's got like 90% no, really on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone who's seen it says it's really great. Why the f is Sean Reisinger going to see it? That really? son of a bitch already saw it. He what happened? Saw and it. I don't know, we weren't invited. Well, how did, was he going like, to trip to LA? What's he doing? I don't know. You just had Zachary Levi out. Yeah. Lovely gentleman. Yeah. Did we do the other one? Have we put out the... 
No. Dave Bautista won? Okay, I won't talk about it then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait, did we? Well, too late. Did we? What's it? Do, do, we, do we put that out yet? Oh, there's Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you finally have a microphone now. <laughs> is it just me, or is, is like Eric's anguish like the best thing in the world? It's delicious. It's delicious. Well, I, I, we'll have to wait to see. <laughs> but uh, we, we were talking earlier about people uh, like figuring stuff out and guessing stuff. That also works, and we learned this really early on with uh, red versus blue, is that you can put the pieces in place for a twist, but if you're going to do a twist in like something that's episodic, especially something that's serial episodic, you have to set up the twist and then pay the twist off in the same episode. Otherwise, within the course of that week, we talked about the person who gets something right in, in the comments. It gets scary because there's always one person who says exactly what's about to happen for the rest of the season. And there was a, I remember there was a person in particular who in the first season of Red vs. Blue around uh, like episode nine, he went through and detailed like everything for the rest of the season. Like this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. He was like 100% right. Was, that dude, they did it with Genlock. Yeah. yeah. I was, I, it, man, some of the comments like early on, I was like, oh, I'm not going to spoil anything because, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, well, this is going to happen because X, and then at the end of the episode, this person is going to come back and do blah, blah. And I was just like, turns out that person was great. Damn. So, yeah, I know. Well, there, no, it's insane. I think, like, people I called. think George R. R. Martin also said that some, someone has already figured out like the end of Game of Thrones. George R. R. Martin says a lot of shit. Well, here's the thing. I think, <laughs> at this point, I assume that he's just, he's just following that person on forums and like, right, like taking notes and being like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't and know what the yes. hell he's doing. As a huge fantasy nerd, first of all, it's Song of Ice and Fire, not Game of Thrones. Um, and I, I've been following that book series forever. I remember waiting eight years for Dance of Dragons to come out. Uh, I just hit my point where finally, like, I was trying to, like, stay away because, like, oh, the show had passed the books and I didn't want to get new, new information from the show. And then I was just like, I don't know. He, he's given up or he just doesn't care anymore. Or, he's, like, he's busy he's writing stuck. a history book about the Targaryens and working on his spinoff TV series. Right. Uh, he's not focused on the, the books at all as so far as I can. It's gave unique, up. I'm watching the show. Sorry, go. It's unique, right? I mean, in terms of media, it's like a, a series that started as books but is going to finish as a TV show. Do you, do you care as somebody who's read it? Do you want him to go back and finish it? Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Like, there are different things that he's done in the books. Like, there are characters that they don't even explore. There are different storylines that like characters are taking. Stoneheart! Yep. Yeah, Stoneheart. Lady Stoneheart. Stoneheart. Yeah. Big uh, one. But then I found Brandon Sanderson, who is an incredible... There we go. Who is an absolute gem. Here he is. Incredible author. Dude, oh, my God. I wish. I would lose my shit. Um, I, that's why I have a, you, I have a Stormlight you, Archive wait, tattoo, actually. Do you want to um, go to Utah and try and like uh, audit one of his classes because he teaches writing right? at like, U of U or something? And I've been like, I should go back to college there specifically yeah. for writing. That was when <laughs> Ashley just so that I can like, sit in the back of the class and go. <laughs> <laughs> that was when Ashley's, like, uh, Ashley and I's like, early bonding moments because I was like talking about something and you were like, oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah Cosmic. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, just 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 go read Brandon Sanderson because he's like way faster, uh, and he just turns out a bunch of great he, stuff. He he writes, which is I think uh, very important for an author. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I think it's you know like a key great. trait. One would say, it's arguable. Well, now, Chad, now that you joined us, I do want to talk about Sea of Thieves, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go, dude. Let's get you well, Pirate Legend. Come on. So yeah, I do. I have to hit Pirate Legend. They did a thing where they had for Sea of Thieves, they had the double XP, double gold weekend, and I was talking about this in the pre-show. But I had to miss getting Pirate Legend, which is level 50 in Sea of Thieves, because I was actually on a trip sailing in the Caribbean. Like, that's where I was. It was like the <laughs> dumbest you, reason. Bernie. The dumbest. We, you know, we, one of the reasons we got into sailing, honestly, is because of Sea of Thieves. We had so much fun playing it, and then uh, Ellie's gone, but we did a vlog where our friend Drew took us out, and we went sailing here in Austin. He's one of those people, Drew, uh, Barb, you know him. He runs the streamies, and he runs Tube yeah, Filter. Drew and uh, he's one of those people that can walk into any room and, like, he leaves and everyone is his best friend. You know, he's like one of those people. Like, also, he goes places and knows everybody everywhere. So he showed up in Austin one day. He's like day. the kind of person who would meet your family before you realize he was meeting your family. Right. Become best friends with your family. And they all love he's him. He's just right? at the yeah. dinner table. And, and he's like, like come <laughs> over for, like, for Thanksgiving and he's already there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like those kind of people too. It's like you also can't remember, how the hell did I meet him? You know, it's like <laughs> I can't remember. Like, how did I meet him? Yeah. Right? You can't trace it. <laughs> we, we have another friend like that, Aaron Morgan, who knows like so many different people. And it's like, I don't remember how I met Aaron. And then he ended up being a moderator on our forums. Anyway, we were on the sailing trip. 
Uh, it was me, uh, it was JD, it was his Uncle Bill uh, on his mom's side, and then it was uh, Drew and his girlfriend, and it was Joe Nicolosi. Joe told me this fucking hilarious story. Joe Nicolosi, by the way, the writer and director of the last two seasons of Red vs. Blue, and he did the, the Lego live action one from season 14. Um, he's now working on a new show. I don't think we've, can I say what that is, Eric? Is that okay? No, okay. You're just gonna spoil everything. It's, it's a Dave, yeah, Dave gonna, Bautista we're show. We're just gonna file that one with Dave Bautista. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he uh, Why don't we just start singing about it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Joe told me that he played a prank on Miles Luna, which is right before Ruby Volume 6 was coming out. They had gone through the writer's room, and they had planned out everything. They had written all the scripts. Joe went home and wrote, like, got out his, some, I guess, like, old, like thick lined paper and wrote, like, a little kid and what a fan they were of Ruby and said, and I just, I'm, so, I'm looking forward. I can't wait to see the new season. I have some ideas of what you should do for the show and then wrote the entire plot for Volume 6. <laughs> <laughs> and then sent it, sent it to Miles. <laughs> and Miles freaked out about it. Because <laughs> he was like, what is this? Read this, read yeah. this. <laughs> but he did, I think he figured it out on his own because like some of the vocabulary was a little too advanced for this little kid. But what a fucking brilliant idea to do that. Oh my God, that's amazing. Do one of the hardest things about like when I was working in animation and also hosting Ruby Rewind was trying to not see monitors. Oh yeah. And like conversations were like constantly happening and I'm like trying to go through like, oh no, I'm supposed to like host the recap show. I find out when the audience finds out, it's so, like I just be like walking through and be like, so about this Ruby thing, I'm like, oh shit. Like and I just like have my blinders on, like trying to run through. Yeah, because like, you worked in the animation building. Right. Yeah. And then even like uh, Torian was starting to like, you know, uh, Torian was our 3D animator for Death Battle for a long time. He was doing some stuff with Genlock. Little bit, and so like all the animators, you know, they all talk, especially like the, the action animators. And so like, then even when I'm like in our safe space, they'd come in and be like, so I'm working on this fight with Sun and, and I'm like, shut up! And, like, and just like have to run away. It was, it was hard. It was hard not to spoil things for you. Oh yeah, yeah, and you too, you'd be like, yeah. hey, have you seen the next episode? And I'm like, no, and like, well, guess what? And, uh, she's like, yeah. you'll see. Yeah. Like, B. Oh yeah, the whole thing, yeah, with, exactly, yeah, the thing with you and Blake. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> They're just friends. Just friends. They held hands. Busy, buzzy, busy, yes. buzzy friends. <laughs> busy, buzzy friends. <laughs> okay. So, Sea of Thieves, what was <laughs> seamless <laughs> transition, Bernie? Back you know what else the, the sea has? Bees. <laughs> sea of bees. Yes. What was the Ooh. gift that they gave people who got Pirate Legend before the anniversary? Because that was logged what, in. That's what everybody was racing for. Does yeah. anybody know? Marvel credit card. Is it a Marvel credit card? Yes. There's a Sea of Thieves credit card. So now, have they announced it yet? Anybody play Sea of Thieves? So really, Chad and I are just talking about a game that nobody's playing. Is that the one I'm hearing here? Listen, it's really fun I mean, Bernie, if you have you friends. you knew it was Sea of Thieves when you started talking about it. Well, every Let's Play that we did for years with me was always either Left 4 Dead 2 or Contagion, which no, nobody was playing. We played, we did like a whole Let's Play, uh, podcast Let's Play with Contagion, right? Is that yeah. where we became the cockroaches? Yes. That's probably one of my favorite series of all time. Very divisive, the choice to make the cockroach voices. You loved that. You edited that, right? I like did, You yeah. did the cockroach voices. Yeah. Yep. I just like how many times you would say, I'm a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> <Kakarocha. laughs> Did that age well? What's that? Contagion? Yeah. <laughs> or the cockroach voice. The cockroach voice. <laughs> it was fine. It was totally fine. <laughs> yeah. It was just yeah. fine. But, well, uh, I'm curious. I got to go log in and see what Our Agario Let's Play is oh, not going to no. age well. That's going to end all of our p political careers. Uh, I don't think that started well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was you should recap for everyone who hasn't seen that Let's Play. But, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, John has started doing some more streaming, too. So I think you can expect to see more uh, streaming on the Rooster Teeth channel on Twitch. And John's going to be doing more of that, like bringing people in. Yeah, I think he's like done that. a couple streams with Gus. They were playing some Western game. Yep. Yep. Yeah? Yeah, we were talking earlier. Right. Uh, no. <laughs> no, not right. It was, it was, some, it was like, a, like an early access sort of sandboxy western type game. I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, John was wearing a tank top and a cowboy hat, which I felt was a bold uh, choice. I mean, look, that's very, that's, uh, I, I want people like to watch on the brand for John. <laughs> Sorry. 
Look, it's just tank top cowboy hat is on brand. I wonder what John's like diet plan looks like. Because in the office every day, he has these little Tupperware containers with these perfectly proportioned, balanced meals and everything. Yep. But then he goes home, and every weekend on Instagram, it's like five boxes of sugar cereal that like, I guess that's his cheat day? Is it just, yeah, yeah. He just pounds down like Lucky Charms on his cheat day? Dude, he rolled in with chicken and waffle cereal the other day. <laughs> No. Oh, no, no. It's incredible. <laughs> it was so good. We were all like, yeah, you're not taking this home. What like, do, you, do, you, do you have that with milk or syrup? No, you just eat. I don't know. Oh. Is it just like chicken? <laughs> is, it, is it chicken flavored? I just ate it straight like a monster. Like, there was no time for to go to the bowl. It was just straight from the... There it is. See? Yeah, that, the, look that, at the chicken that, is radiating. That box looks really unappetizing. Well, don't, don't eat the box. Taste it, though. <laughs> don't eat the box. And then I ate the bowl. High in no. fiber, the box. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> All right. So, does it taste like chicken? It tastes like chicken? It's like maple syrupy goodness. I can't even. You just. Yeah, it tastes like chicken and waffles. Thank you <laughs> so much. Hey, she's on are, are, Is chicken not a part of chicken and waffles? <laughs> Because of our, one of the main ingredients in it. But it's not standalone. It's the, it's the harmony where they come together. So listen, if you, this is, sorry for everybody watching at home. Oh, great. If you're this here in bad. town, how many of you are from out of town? If, you're, if you can't see this at home, literally every person raised their hand. Uh, while you're in town, normally would not reckon, uh, recommend Torchies as a restaurant to go to in Austin. However, in I mean, March... They have the taco of the month, which is Ashley's favorite thing, which is the, the Roscoe, Rosco. which is a chicken and waffles taco. Shouldn't it you be reading off the iPad for this part? It's no. Like, it's okay. have, no. You, have you had one of these, Chad? So it's like the taco, and then they put a waffle, and then they put the chicken, and then it's like bacon egg. and an egg, uh, and then they give you a little thing of syrup. And then they sprinkle it off with some diabetes. It's, <laughs> it's insane. I, I've been working myself up all month. I'm allowed one per year, and I've been like, just yeah, but like you're pregnant. You can have you can have as many now. No, no, no. I mean because it's just like so much. Look at that taco. Did you, look at that like, taco. Did it's you? just like such a whole thing. Can we talk about the crowd reaction? Like half the people were like yes, and the other people were like oh god. <laughs> like ten people just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get it. Yeah, they're going to get yeah. one, dude. I actually. <laughs> I gotta eat some right now. <laughs> Please. That'd be a great idea. Please we, do it. How many? Who wants one? It's half an hour. Who's gonna say no? Who's gonna say no to that? All right, three. Three. We'll pick our favorite three. No, do it. I actually, I'm Eric, get us some chicken and that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love that we can we scream at Eric to get the us stuff. Roscoe. <laughs> Eric, I want a water bed. <laughs> what happened to water beds? Eric, a uh, marble credit card, please. <laughs> yeah, we want a chicken and waffles credit card. <laughs> you get one of those? Hey, what? Eric. What Marvel character would jack you off? No! No! You, know, uh, you should have chose Drax, played by Dave Bautista. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have been a good choice, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, but here's the problem, is he would just do it so slow, you you'd be invisible and you'd think you were alone. Eric is a WWE fan. <laughs> Huge. So, so, theoretically, if we had Dave Bautista in the studio, he'd let him. Eric was, he had such a rare, he was I like a human. He, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was so giddy with him around. Can we not talk about this for real? Or I, it... I mean, we. I guess we can. What am I going to tell Nadia? No, like, oh, we already talked. We're not going to edit this, so it's going in. <laughs> I mean, like, we're talking about it, bud. But you were excited. Oh yeah, dude. He's a former WWE champion. What am I going to do about that? Like, what? Uh, hey, six, Eric, six did you not spoil the upcoming podcast, dude? That's what? really unprofessional. <laughs> Thanks, man. Seriously, dude. I mean, you're the producer. You shouldn't be talking about this stuff. Listen, he told me that I had a cool mustache, which is all I really needed to hear from anyone, but it was from Batista. Yeah. That's great. I also want to point out, this is no joke, I think the sixth time you've said that he complimented your mustache. <laughs> Just so you know, it's the sixth time you've heard it. It's probably like the 13th time I've said yeah. it. And he's never washed it since. Yeah. <laughs>
So for the uh, for the the live Christmas special that we did, that was like all the live sketches and everything. Uh, I did a thing where I had grown my beard out as far as I could in the time that we were rehearsing for it. I was in the first sketch, and then we brought back the cop characters. Me and Joel Heyman are uh, what do they call them? The Hardy Boys, I think, is what people name those characters. Uh, and so I shaved between the two sketches. I shaved down to where I had one of the what do you call that? Like handlebar. Handlebar handle handle bar was good, dude. You, yeah, you nailed it. Trucker must have, and everybody was like, ah, that's funny. Eric, when I walked in the next day, he goes, he goes, right on, man. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta shave this thing immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I look cool? You. Thank you, look, you man. You look so awesome. <laughs> you were just like, I think like your, your, like your children would have been proud. They look like you would have done like backyard barbecues and drank like bad beer. You look like bad uh, dude. Do you think Dave Bautista would have liked it, Eric? Oh, hell yeah, yeah. he would have liked it. <laughs> yeah, Bautista bomb all over the should've place, kept brother. It. Should have kept it. I should have stolen all your compliments about your sweet mustache. <laughs> we could have got him on Nick's motorcycle and then just driven away. <laughs> But it was fun. Like we, uh, we've had a lot of guests. I feel like on the podcast lately, and in the past, guests have always not been. They always haven't been really well received. But I think lately, like Rhett and Link were on just recently. <laughs> so wait, I think we might do some more of that stuff. But it did feel like, especially around South by. Oh, and by the way, the Torchy Taco is only available during the the Roscoe is only available during March. So they, they do it every year for South by. But I'm not advertising you torches. Roosterteeth.com forward slash torches. No. <laughs> right now. I actually, this, is, this just goes to show how much I like this taco. I actually don't like torches a lot. They're one of the only places in Austin that wouldn't let us film there. Really? We, when we, were, we shot the, uh, the film, uh, excuse me, the food vlog, where we went to the eight different restaurants a day. By the way, Barbara was a fucking champ during that thing. MVP for sure. I ate all the food. And, <laughs> and, and I pooped all night. And, and it, oh my God. And, Barb, are you <laughs> pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, but in addition to going to each of the food places and eating all of the things, which was a misery of deliciousness, but still really painful, she also ate a bunch of poutine because Bernie better. Yeah, they, you bet me well, like 250 bucks, I think, if I could eat a whole plate of poutine. I think you were Frank. so cheap. I think it was like 50 bucks. I think it was probably. Damn, yeah. dude. Yeah, <laughs> she, she ate a whole plate or tried to eat a whole plate of poutine for 50 bucks. I would have done it just for uh, bragging rights, honestly. Was it 50? 250? There you go. Thank you. Okay. You watched the vlog today. <laughs> See? Well, you know what? Who asked you, honestly? <laughs> Well, but they the, came to her defense when you started with, I think you were too cheap, and you went with 50 yeah, bucks. Yeah, thank you. Was it 250? It was, but the best part, I couldn't fucking finish it. I no, it's impossible. It was, the plate came out, and it was like this big. The best part, though, is because it was right around RTX, we happened to be sitting next to some Rooster Teeth fans at the table next to us, so I kept being like, take more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they were eating, and they're just like, okay, <laughs> too much. Barbara's was <laughs> like pushing in the front. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it's like, you and Gavin, like, it's just like, being around you guys, you never know what's gonna happen. Like, Gavin especially. Like, he just loves to throw out those wacky, like, oh, would you do this for money? Or, I'll give you this if you blank, right? Gavin and so, is like the definition of, like, dance monkey. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. I understand. Oh, you want my money? Then here, do this. <laughs> um, so, like, we, uh, we went out, uh, we were at South By, and we went out to this Batman event. And I really, like, the only reason this didn't happen is because Gavin had tuned this guy out. So we got in these pedicabs, because we had this Batman thing, and then we were going to take us over to the Bat Bridge, and they were going to release the bats, and we were going to do that whole thing. Um, but like, while we're there, you know, me and Gavin are joking around with our pedicab driver, and Gavin's like, oh, you know why you're so slow? Like, you should, you should go over take the other guys, you know, right? And then he's just like, oh, well, that guy's my boss. Like, I don't really want to do that. And then he was like, oh, you're really lagging behind in the race. And the guy's like, oh, well, I only race. And this is where Gavin tunes out, and uh -oh. he gets distracted by something. But the guy goes like, oh, yeah, it costs $100. You know, if you want me to race, and I looked at him, and I went like, a f "You just like, you just lucked out today," because he, <laughs> I was like, because he tuned out, and he is not the one. No. Like, I know you're throwing out there like, ha ha ha. He would have whipped that shit out in a second. <laughs> Do it, yeah. And been like, race. You know, like, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, but anyway, we, we egged him on uh, once Gavin like tuned back in, and the guy ended up passing everybody, and uh, it was great. We thought we were gonna get into a wreck, the, like. I thought, like, I was in an action movie 
we're like, there's the hotel where we're supposed to go. And this dude like cuts across traffic. And I'm like, no way. And there's like these two cars. And I'm like, surely our cart is not big enough for this. And the dude just whips it and goes right in between. I'm like, bracing for impact, places it like yeah. perfectly. And then I was Gavin's just like, like, drink these bottle of yeah. barbecue sauce. <laughs> way. I love the bottle of barbecue sauce one because the, the, the trick with Gavin is if he ever bets you an amount of money or throws out a ridiculous amount of money mm -hmm. to do something, always say yes. And then he goes, what? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to do it. Like, I, I think it was uh, Michael. I, I'm just going to try to remember what it was. There was a bottle of barbecue sauce yeah. on the table at the old office. And how much was it? Was it like 200? It, like it was like 200 bucks or something like that? How much money was it though? Yeah, how much was it? I remember. Thank you, Rooster Teeth Historian. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Yeah. Eric, you better watch out. <laughs> Chop them on. <laughs> but uh, hey, Eric, it's still one of my favorite moments. When, it's right around when Gavin and Michael first came on board. And they were first, like, they were, they hit it off right away, but they were still working stuff out. And I remember that he, Gavin said, I'll, I'll pay you $50. God, I think it was like, it felt like so much more at the time uh, to drink that bottle of barbecue sauce on the table. And Mike goes, I'll do that. And so he walks up, he goes, are you yeah, sure? And then Gavin, then Gavin goes, well, how about 30? And it's like, Gavin, that's not how negotiating works. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you already offered. He's already agreed to it. You, you can't go down from there. And I remember Michael, he took this big thing of barbecue sauce. He goes, go, uh, go. And then he puts it out, he goes, you are so fucked. <laughs> and then, <he laughs> then downs the rest of it. Michael was the machine for eating stuff when he first showed up at Richie. And we he never... still is. Now he just throws up and then keeps going. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So I remember I had a conversation with Michael's dad where I, I, I assured him that we were not trying to kill him. <laughs> I was like, that was a weird conversation to have back when I was CEO. It's like, well, I swear we're not trying to kill your son. I still remember the lava cakes from Extra Life, like 2012. He yeah. turned so red. <laughs> Guys, it was worse in person. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> For the, the uh, kids, yeah, I guess so. But and also, uh, the giant gummy bear. Oh. Uh, uh, he actually, it was surprising how poorly he did at that. Like, it was five pounds of sugar, but he, like, barely made it through the head. I feel like Dude, it stays much. in your stomach. Uh. As opposed to what? It's hard to throw up. Like, we did a gummy bear uh, eating challenge way back in the day with Screw Attack, and, like, Sam was doing it, and afterwards was like, oh, hey, this will be fun. We'll, like, get the, like, end card or whatever with you throwing up. And he's like, I can't do it. He's like, uh, and like, he couldn't get it uh. out because it just sort of like all formed this mass in his stomach. Maybe to just Yeah, don't back do a like gummy gelatin. eating contest. It's terrible. It reformed into a gummy bear yeah. in his stomach. <laughs> it's just like, back to kill no! you. No! No! Oh, here it is. Oh, oh God, no! Oh, no! Look how miserable he is. Oh, yeah. He was so, we are so little. I know. Oh. I, li I think I'm wearing the same shirt in that video yeah. that I'm wearing today. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. It's always nice when you have like, I am. It's, 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 it's nice when you have like two outfits and that's it for 10 years. It makes it so easy to pick up shots. You become like a cartoon character. No, that's what my, my closet looks like. I literally have my work clothes are like five of these shirts are all the same. And then like like two or three different hoodies that I wear, and that's it. Basically the same color jeans. So it's like I, I and I do that because if I ever show up at the office, and I lost it on this trip, the boating trip I was just on. If you that, ever show up at the office, yeah. If I ever show up. And that uh that black uh, hat with the white star, I just have like two or three of those that I keep at different places. So I can throw that on and it's probably like a 90% chance if they need to do like a pickup shots or on something, I'm wearing the same thing. It's the same with these aviators. It is. You, yeah. you probably have uh, 20 pairs of these or something? I, I buy them uh, six Amazon. at a time on Amazon. Yeah. They're eight bucks. I remember you- So what you're saying is you could throw one out to the crowd probably. right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernie was an app. Yeah, it's cool. Enjoy it. That's coming right, on my right, paycheck. Here's the deal. Let me see eight bucks. Hold on. Right? Hold on. He's Who got said he's, that? Who said 50 bucks? He's got to pay for him. Oh my God. All right. What's your name? <laughs> Micah? Yeah. All right. I'll give you the glass, glasses. Do you want to do an ad read for stamps.com? And I'll pay. I'll give you. Come on. Come on. Uh, 
I'm gonna. Give me. Go, go, go. Yeah. I'll bring it back. Give me right back. Eric, do we have a mic? Here. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Eric. Why are you not prepared for I, this? Micah, Micah. Jacob I, Batista would be prepared. Oh. oh. Damn, Dude, Micah's got sass. Here, look how comfortable look, he got in that chair so read. fast. <laughs> yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I'll do the ad read, Okay. and then he can read the URL. Like, I'll throw to him. Okay. You going to be ready for this? Yeah. You got to come over here, your, though. You got to come over here. Here's your microphone, I guess. Dude, he is so... <laughs> he is so... Where are you going? He's going next to Bernie. Okay. All right. Yeah, you worked at like you worked at Mega Sixty Four yeah, for. Because <laughs> <laughs> <it's> the... <laughs> Eric Bardor, right, everybody, it, let's hey, give it up. Like yeah. <laughs> so I'll just point you on these things here. Yeah. You, read, you, read, you read the. You read this right there. He's every time, be every time it comes up, you read that. Bald in like a year. But I'll always have that muscle. Guys, we're being professional over oh, here. Please, sorry. for God's sake. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it's Hello? OK, it is. Mike has like, got the chair. He's giving notes, Eric. <laughs> this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by... Stamps.com. No one really has time to go to the post office. You're busy. You've got time. Who's got time for all that traffic? Parking, lugging all your mail and packages? It's a real hassle. That's why you need... Stamps.com. <laughs> oh, Stamps.com. Brings all of the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Stamps.com. Is the faster and more convenient way to get postage. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. And the mail carrier picks it up. No more lugging to the post office. It's the absolute best. There's no equipment to lease and no long-term commitments. This is a must-have for any small business. I use stamps.com because I love how easy it is. I don't have to take time out of my day to plan for a trip to the post office. I can just get the official postage right from my own computer with stamps.com. You get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long term commitment. See for yourself why over 700,000 businesses, small businesses as well, use stamps.com. Just go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in rooster. That's uh, S. S T A M P S D O T comp. And <laughs> in, enter. In I'm nervous. <laughs> that is stamps.com and use the code rooster. rooster. Thank you, stamps.com, for sponsoring by. Thank Thanks you. to Micah. Thanks, Jeff.com. I love you. Give this where he's got sunglasses. Got sunglasses. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well earned. Enjoy that. Well earned. Oh, oh my God. Jeez, that was my what, a, what, a, part. what a fucking sellout. <laughs> You're taking. Part of the revenue? What's that? No. no. You got your sunglasses. Enjoy That's how it. That's people, people are rooting with those cheap ass sunglasses, dude. <laughs> right. But they're hey, probably coming out of my paycheck, okay? <laughs> Chad's joking. Christmas Chad's book. joking. He doesn't get a paycheck. No, I'm not. <laughs> he does not. What else do we want to talk about? Did anybody, uh, did anybody, uh, <laughs> what? Apex. You want to talk about you Apex? You want to go back to Apex? So I might be, I might be, I said this to Ashley right before the trip, right before I left, I might be done with Apex. What? Because... I got do you this. <laughs> <laughs> because I got all the achievements because I'm lame and I play on the Xbox. I got all the achievements in uh, Apex. I hit level 50. The, the, actually, the hardest one to get was there's an achievement on the Xbox. And if you play PlayStation, tell me if this is a trophy. You have to equip a legendary helmet and a legendary body shield, the gold level. Uh -huh. You know, you have to have both at the same time. That's an achievement, and that's just like kind of random. You know, usually towards the end game, I, I thought I'm sh for sure I'm going to run into a gold helmet and gold armor. Yeah, you but, just have to stay alive. Yeah. Well, this was literally like I was in uh, a duo with somebody else. I, I started a match where I only had two people in my squad. And we made it all the way through the end. And I remember it was a Bangalore we were up against. And we were in a house. 
and the Bangalore was running on the outside, and I found one of their squad members that we killed. Their box was gold. And he had mentioned earlier he didn't have that achievement either, and I found a gold helmet and a gold body shield. And I go, oh, dude, I found him. And I got it. You, do you want to take it? Like, take off your armor. I'll give it to you. Put them on, and then you yeah. drop them? And he's like, I'm not sure this is the best time for that right now. Because <laughs> we're about to win the game. I'm like, yeah, but this achievement's going to last forever. And then he gets killed by the Bangalore. I kill the Bangalore, and we win. I'm like, sorry, dude. He goes, I heard him like in the last second go, I should have taken the armor. <laughs> <laughs> you live with regret. So I haven't played Apex since I've been back. Should I get back in? Have they done anything new yet besides like the... What's Firestorm? Is that a new character? Oh, is Firestorm a different game? Are you guys having a conversation? I know. Yeah, <laughs> Firestorm's like, Battlefield. Like What's that? Firestorm's the Battlefield Battle Royale. Oh, okay. Nah, nah we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the, I've noticed that I've been seeing more videos lately uh, that really rare animations are coming up in Apex Legends. Like, especially, they seem to do more stuff around Wraith in particular, where... Gee, I wonder why. Well, well why? I don't know. Because it's like the most popular character in Is the Wraith game. the most popular? Yeah, 100%. Like, Wraith. I would have picked a... Uh, I would have thought, yeah, I guess so. I guess Wraith is pretty popular. I would have said maybe... Lifeline as well. I'm a Lifeline main. Yeah, Lifelines uh, I think is a really popular one, but it's really kind of the only which, support class. They have like, Pathfinder, but Pathfinder is really... Yeah. I don't you're, feel like you're making zip lines for people every now and then. It doesn't feel like you're really supporting that much. Yeah, were you in the office the other day when they had the voice actresses come through? No! Yeah. yeah. Seriously. 100%. Yeah. What, which, uh, played which characters? Um, so, uh, Mela Lee, she's the voice for Lifeline. Yeah. Yep. Um, she, she came through uh, with Victoria Atkin, uh, and so we, we gave it to her Rooster Teeth, but Mela Lee actually already works with Rooster Teeth. She's a voice in Ruby. Yeah. Yep. God damn. No, but I missed she, that. She busted out the Lifeline voice, and Fiona from Achievement Hunter, like, melted down. It was amazing. Well, it's crazy. You're just, like, giving a tour, and then I'm just working. And you're like, and this is Chad. I'm like, hi. You know, and then they're just like, oh, hey. And then they're like, oh, you were in town for this stuff. And like, uh, and she's like, oh, hi, I'm Victoria Acton. And I'm like, oh, I've, I've heard of you. And then... Uh, Mela. Mela uh, was just, uh, she's super cool. And then sometimes she's like, oh, yeah, we were doing, I was like, are you guys in town for South By? She's like, oh, yeah, she was doing Fortnite panel, I was doing Apex panel. I was like, oh, cool. She's like, yeah, voice for Apex. I'm like, oh, great. And she's just like, I got a birthday present for you. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm a life <laughs> one man. Like, I got like, oh, super happy, real quick. It was great. I like this story because it sounds like you're totally disinterested in meeting them. Otherwise, you're like, yeah, whatever. Well, it's just like, I'm just working. And then we, you're we just did, crowding like, around my we office. We did, like, accidentally camp out outside of Chad's office door. Yeah, you did, like but you didn't minutes. introduce me for, until for, I stood up and be like, what are you doing outside my office? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a thing where I'm bad at introducing people because just something in the back of my mind tells me that everyone already knows each other and I'm the only one who didn't know everybody. <laughs> I'm we, sorry. We know everyone. That's okay. Well, now I'm just sad. <laughs> Stop. I thought you were going to keep going. I, I don't know what it is. Like, I'll walk up and I'll be like, uh, yeah, so, you know, and then there's a bunch of people and they're like, yeah, I'm so and so. And they introduce each other and I'm like, ah. <laughs> I got to admit, too, I'm also at the point with Apex where it's like stuff that annoys me in the game is really starting to annoy me. Like, the big thing is now is I would think players would get better about this as time went on. But now it's a thing where as soon as somebody gets downed, they immediately just quit the game, which is like, that's exactly the opposite of how That's when you shine. Apex is supposed to work, yeah, especially as Lifeline, right? I mean, even now, it's like they don't even get eliminated. They get just downed, and then they immediately quit. You, you got to play with friends. Yeah, or, you, yeah, right, because I play with randoms, and it's like you're diving in, and then one person goes, I just want to go a totally different yep. place than you guys, and I'm just going to go off by myself. And it's like I just, I, it's like one in three shot, it feels like, of getting that. Play on console. Yeah, play on console. No, they do that on PC too, though, man. Like, a lot of people will bounce really early. But, man, bro, <laughs> you are such a stickler. And I, I do do this, but, like, Bernie's so used to being downed initially uh, that, he, <laughs> that he's like, nice. you gotta mark them. You have to mark them immediately. He's like, this is where I excel. Oh, you mean when you're when down, you game you're time? Yeah, you have to mark where they're at when you're down, when yeah. you're marked. I mean, that's your job. In fact, it's like if like I'm shooting, like taking, trying to take down a squad, and there's a person crawling around. I know they're marking me the whole time. Like they're just saying, "Here he is, here he is." So it's like I'm looking, looking, looking. I go bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang, bang. <laughs> try to shoot the person. That's actually one of the, my favorite parts of that game is when someone is downed and they have that shield, 
It's like a cat and mouse game of like trying to kill them. I usually just now use thermal grenades for that. I just toss a thermal <laughs> Burn. grenade at them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Insult to injury. Although I do like the finishers in that too. Like I've unlocked some of the, I've unlocked, I had to unlock uh, or at least go into the trackers to see for Xbox. Why I don't have a main is because one of the achievements is get 5,000 damage with all eight of the current legends. Are they, when are they gonna put new ones out? Anybody know? Soon. Octane's out? Fuck, now I gotta go play. Fuck y'all. Well, you guys, I was actually about to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, totally. What, what's your favorite part about Octane? Um, he runs fast. He runs fast. <laughs> like he's in the Big Bang Theory. Does he actually run fast or does he, is he really slow? What? And he gives a great jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> but if you uh, have to choose one of the Apex Legend characters, I, he gets I, you off. I would pick Gibraltar for that. <laughs> He's got an arm shield for a reason. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's got to be what it's for to block stuff. Eric, do you need me to reread this ad? No, you're good. All right, good. Micah did a good enough job reading it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other topics somebody wants to shout out? God, so we only have like five minutes left. There's so much stuff I want to cover. Did you guys see Alex Jones's public freakout in no. Austin? No. It was pretty dope. Okay. He was in Lucy's Fried Chicken. Which is a local fr like fried chicken place. It's uh, North Austin. Yeah, and uh, he freaked out. What'd you say? Fuck that guy. Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Fuck you! How about you? Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking libtard. It was, he was unbelievable. He was like off the rails. He was red as a beet. Eric, did somebody die over there? Eric, what did you do? Libtard was just a joke. Hold, hold on. Oh, sorry, everybody. But, uh, but yeah, he was having this like utter freak out and like it's it's kind of like the worst part of being in America these days, which is just a bunch of people with their phones out, all pointing at each other and all screaming at each other, including Alex Jones himself. He just has his phone, and he's recording and yelling at everybody. And it's just like it's a fucking scene. That being said, it was pretty I watched the whole thing. It was pretty <laughs> I like the idea that nobody, like that person didn't know what that video was about, so you're just yelling at them with your phone out, <laughs> calling them a fucking libtard. Well, they said, yeah, fuck yeah. that guy. I'm sure you've, I've, did you oh. see the video? <sighs> Were you one of the people at Lucy's yelling at them? Because <laughs> they did pan over to those people eventually, and it just looked like a bunch of people that like, would be on like an internet land group, and then they all came out to meet somewhere. They totally looked like, Everyone else I've ever met on the internet, they're like, fuck you, Alex Jones. Yeah. And apparently he got really pissed off about it. You gotta Dude, see it though. During, uh, during South by, like, we almost got into a bar fight. Who's we? Uh, it was me, uh, you Sam, and your daughter, and uh, Dave Eddings. <laughs> uh, we were bar fight adjacent. Um, and that is it. <laughs> we're, we're hanging out, you know, it's South by, so we like hit a couple bars. Uh, and then these bouncers were tossing some people, and they, they weren't very happy about it, naturally. Uh, and then uh, this one girl comes up, and she was real mad about her friend getting bounced, and she starts like screaming at these bouncers. And then we've got like bouncer A and bouncer B. Bouncer A is like super like jacked, like ready to go, and he's just like being pretty stoic, like mm mm, you gotta go, you gotta go. Bouncer B is like super scrawny, and he's like fuck you, bitch, and I'm like ooh. <laughs> I was like that's that's not how you de-escalate no, a situation, yeah. like. Especially when alcohol is involved. And he's like, get the fuck out, bitch! And I'm just like, oh no! Who you calling, bitch? My girlfriend's gonna call her hand, slap your ass, you piece of shit! Pretty much. <laughs> right? It was me. So right after that, exactly verbatim, she pushes one and hits the other. Wow. And I'm like, oh god, I'm about to watch like this dude hit this chick. And instead, like, then they, they were just escorting her out, and the other guy, the guy who was mouth, he was just kidding. That's my bitch, I'm just screaming. Like, but then they take her out, and I'm like, okay, everything's cool. And like, one of the bouncer came out, and he's just like, hey guys, I'm sorry about that. And we're like, oh, it's all good. And he's like, let me buy you all shots. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> uh, so he does that, and we have fun. And then, uh, and then we're, we're leaving, and this girl is outside, now with her friends who had gotten bounced. I brought my around. posse back, and we gonna kick your ass, bitch. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I, I speak drug girl. Yes. Uh, and she is screaming about how she wants to see their manager. I want to see your manager. And uh, my, my friend David Eddings, he's worked for his team. Uh, he's like, he likes to like try and resolve conflicts. He's a social butterfly. And he like, 
That's the dumbest thing ever. And that's that he steps himself in between oh, this girl no. and the dude that she's yelling at. And he's like, terrible idea. He's like, hey, it's okay. Why don't you go home? And she just fucking <gasps> hits him in the mouth. Right? This girl's a menace. Well, right? I mean, to, to like to a drunk girl, that sounds like calm down. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so he's like, what? He goes back, and then her friend, because I start walking up, he like gets up in my face, and he's like, what you want to do? Like, and he's got this, and I'm like, whoa, dude, like, I'm just, I'm going to get my drunk friend. And like, I recommend you get your drunk friend. Um, and he's just like, he's up in my face, and he like- With the bouncer? To, no, or this the... was like the dude who got bounced earlier. Oh, okay. Um, and like, he's just is trying to start some shit, and I'm just like, hey, listen. Probably because he was afraid to fight like, the girl. He <laughs> right? It'd be easier. I yeah. need to take my aggression but, out on him. Here's the thing. This dude looks a lot easier to fight right. than that girl. If you're ever, if you're ever in the scenario, like, don't, don't escalate it. You just gotta just be like, <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not trying to do anything. <laughs> my friend was trying to help. Clearly, he made a poor decision. I'm just gonna get him. He's been drinking. You guys been drinking? Yeah, I thought so. Cool. I'm gonna get him, and we're gonna go. And I recommend you guys do the same. But if you don't, that's on you. Have a good night. And I took my, and I got David the hell out of there. Like, that's, a, that's a lot of words to get out in short, like in such a short period of time. Oh yeah. I'd be like, well, that's ah, I'm you, gonna go. Blah, 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 blah. That's, that's why you got the disarming stances. Like ah, eh, ah, not trying to. I'm not, not trying to do shit. Whereas but if you also throw, if you throw shoulders, shielding yourself. Yeah. Or like, right. Yeah. Become smaller, less intimidating. <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt nobody. <laughs> exactly. I'm just a little gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> How much would it cost for you to go do the drunk girl impression right now on 6th Street after this? <laughs> like, go up to a bouncer and be like... <laughs> I'm like, yo, let me in this bar, you guy. You bounced me <laughs> half an hour ago. You probably don't remember because you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that you're dr I like that your drunk girl is basically Elise Willows. <laughs> <laughs> No, apparently I didn't know this, but like ever like my go-to improv character is, is someone smoking. She does. Uh, you talk about which apparently is Elise Elise's character from uh, Twisting Creds. I had no idea. But so then, I was like, oh, that's a great impression Barbara's doing, and I was like, she, what? <laughs> she always does it like this, and then she does the tap tap tap, like like I've she's never got one of those like before. ye old Madame like stems. <laughs> All right, you don't know what you're talking about. All right. I'm going to bring my drunk friend and we're going to slap your ass. All right, lightning round of stuff I wanted to talk about. Uh, Major Nelson, I don't know if you guys saw it, he released the email that I wrote him when I asked him to come to my massage with me. Yeah, he actually put out the email on Twitter that I sent him, or that Siri fucking bitch sent him uh, to do it. And it was just like made me relive all that stuff again. And then, of course, everyone I know at Microsoft was like retweeting this story. They oh, I did made, too. They just made an art day about it. That was fucking terrible. Uh, I learned, uh, I remembered actually uh, on this trip, we had salt and pepper shakers, and I was like salting something and over salted it. And I remembered something, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before on the podcast. When I was a kid, I thought that salt and pepper were opposites. So <laughs> that they, so that they, I thought they. I can see it right now. I, <laughs> like, I thought they canceled each other out. <laughs> so if I over salted something, I just put a bunch more pepper in. And then it would be too peppery and I put more salt in. And my well, mom. Well, this would, one's the void. My mom would watch it me do this. up the other one. She's like, baby, that's way too much salt and pepper. And I'd be eating my macaroni and cheese. It would sound like I was eating sand. It'd be like, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always so mad at myself for getting the mixture wrong. But I was just constantly going up, 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 trying to balance everything out. So it's, it was a pretty stupid kid, Ashley. <laughs> You might <laughs> Look, I've, I've heard the stories. I'm a little bit worried. Are you? <laughs> I love that this was on your notes to talk about <laughs> that. Yeah. You're right there. It's just like, the, I didn't remember that. And so this is what you're in store for, Ashley. You're going to have a child that does stupid things like that. I and mean, boils gas or, Look, I, I know about, uh, about uh, your, you thinking the zombies were real. I know about uh, you... Uh, allowing, potentially even encouraging your brother to hit you with a rubber mallet. Yep. Um, yep. Because how could that hurt? It's rubber. Think of Looney Tunes. They got all their knowledge from Looney you know Tunes. The story they about found a rubber mallet and like, surely Acme will save me. Do you know the story about uh, when I was a kid and I tried to, I invented napalm and tried to make it at home? What? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they, know, they know, they know. I remember you inventing napalm. 
You know what we did find out about tonight, though? And that's that you used to wear eyeliner in high school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so I have a question about that. We were talking about it before it started and immediately said, wait, stop. I think we need to discuss this more in depth. You, what about uh, eyeliner? So I grew up in a period of, in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> which was called the New Wave. And <laughs> New Wave was yes. Flock of Seagulls, was a was, was big part of that. And so I had, a, I have the picture, I've had it for years. But you're up. not wearing eyeliner. You just said you took it off for that picture. No, because they made me take off eye, my eyeliner for picture day. But well, it you, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie, you know, we have our- But I got this hair, this Flock of Seagulls, like whoosh hair. I, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Chad, for representing today. But yeah, I used uh, to wear eyeliner. We would go, <laughs> there was this shitty little club that would let, it was like an eight, under 18 dance club. I, what person would ever open a venue like that? Oh no, Seems they like existed. An, it was like one of the only types of clubs in Utah. Like a jiffer, right, right, yeah. Right? I, I, I heard a lot <laughs> about them. And we would go, we would slam dance. And, slam uh, dance? Yeah, we would slam dance to the bangles. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. <laughs> And, uh, and I, would, I would wear eyeliner at that. And I started wearing eyeliner to school and I would get in trouble for it because I, 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 it's really weird now. It's like, we, we couldn't wear shorts to school. This was in Texas where it's fucking hot. We couldn't wear shorts to school and I couldn't grow a beard. So thank God they, <laughs> they made a law that, or made a law, made a rule that a guy, guys can't have facial hair. Like we had a play where one of our guys had to grow a beard and he could in high school because he was one of these puberty cases. <laughs> and uh, he's probably fucking in prison dick. now. No. But uh, he could grow a beard in high school, and uh, he got to grow a beard, and it was like the biggest deal to everybody else that this guy had permission to grow a beard. And you couldn't wear your eyeliner. And I couldn't wear my eyeliner. Yeah. yeah. But you know, we do have a makeup artist here. Ooh. You wanna? And, and I work. <laughs> <laughs> what a great thing for the post show. We could have uh, Aaron put eyeliner on me. Actually, though, to be clear, and I might I have this set once, this up ahead of time. I did this once before where Ellie came out and she had smoky eyes. She said she was specifically dressed for her show tonight, but last time she was on, or one of the first times she was on the podcast, she had that same smoky eyeshadow. Yeah. And I saw her in the chair, and as soon as she walked out of the room, I said to either Aaron or I think Anna, it's Aaron. yeah, Aaron, I said, give me the exact same eyes that you gave to. <laughs> and so there's, there's on this podcast, I've worn like eyeliner and eyeshadow, which was not part of my routine in high school <laughs> at Fame City. But anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out. Yep. To live edition of the Rooster Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for joining us at home as always. And thanks to all of our sponsors. Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Did you guys like it? Yeah. All right, cool. Then make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out these other videos that are down below. Which one's your favorite? Quick pick. All right, well, whatever, one of them. <laughs> <laughs>